Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News with a tragic story today. I'm recording this actually from my mobile setup. I've got family staying with me, so the home studio uh, not exactly uh, available at the morning hour. A very tragic, tragic time right now in Bachelor Nation. We're going to cover this as delicately as possible, but of course it's a trigger warning here uh, for the... Um, topic of suicide. Bachelorette contestant dead at 36, days after posting about depression and anxiety. This story broke yesterday evening, and, you know, we kind of knew that someone had um, ended their life before knowing who it was, and we knew it was someone in Bachelor Nation, and there were some rumors going around, but then this story was posted, I believe, yes, yesterday afternoon, and I'm just going to read the article for you, and then we'll get to um, some other unfortunate kind of similar instances in the Bachelor world. Bachelorette contestant Josh Sider, who was always open and honest about his struggles with mental health, has died. A statement from his family Monday reads, It is with an extremely heavy heart that we share the tragic news of Josh's unexpected passing. As all who knew him can attest, Joshua was an incredibly bright light in an increasingly dim world. There he is um, in Caitlin Bristow's season. They continue, his fearless voice and indomitable spirit help thousands of people in their darkest moments feel just a little less alone. Although our heartache at Joshua's passing pains us beyond measure, we find comfort knowing that he is finally at peace. The statement does not reveal Josh's cause of death, but includes a phone number for people to call who may be experiencing a mental health crisis. He had just posted this, surviving depression and anxiety one day at a time with a smile. Josh has always posted about his issues with mental health, and just four days ago posted a photo smiling with the caption, Surviving Depression. I'm Josh, and I'm a suicide attempt survivor. I battle OCD, bipolar depression, and GAD, but I refuse to give up. What did you survive? He's been extremely open and honest about his struggles over the years, um, and he has you know, taken to social media and shared his journey. He appeared on Caitlin Bristow's season of The Bachelorette back in 2015 and was eliminated on week one. So along with, and this is just, again, any, any further, uh, if this is like too dark for people to handle, uh, I understand. We're going to continue talking about it, though. So um, Caitlin Bristow also had another member of her season uh, with a similar um, journey. Bachelorette alum Clint, Clint's cause of death revealed. Clint was uh, Clint Arliss was found dead in his room at his parents' home just after 12 p.m. local time on January 11th. This was back in 2022, you might remember. So just one year later, another um, sort of cast member from Caitlyn's season, which of course has no uh, connective tissue to Caitlyn. It's just a tragic thing that that you know, un you know, too many people unfortunately have had to deal with in too many families. So they uh, didn't know exactly with Clint's story. Uh, you know, we covered it at the time, but he was found in his parents' home, and um, they uh, they uh, you know came to the conclusion that it was a mental health issue. Uh, and there are other people in Bachelor Nation. I mean, look, every year you've got thirty contestants from Bachelor, thirty from Bachelorette. Statistically speaking, you're going to get mental health problems, uh, issues of all different types, and the type of people and the scrutiny that they might face from going on TV, probably the first thing a lot of people realize is your problems aren't going to be solved by going on TV. Uh, there are very few people whose mental health issues get better after going on TV, even for someone who only went on for one episode. It doesn't mean that the show is at fault for his journey. It's just heartbreaking to see the struggle that a lot of people have I'm sure his family, he was very open with his struggle, so a lot of people knew about this, and yet, even with all of that knowledge, help, and support, people can still, you know, lose themselves. So, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and Crisis Lifeline number is 988. So all you have to do is call if you're feeling like you need someone to talk to. Uh, we know within our community, you can always reach out to somebody. Uh, we've got the Dave Neal community, which... You know, it's 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 not about promoting it. It's about just knowing you're not alone. And even something as simple as having a couple strangers to talk to in a comment section can go a long way. Now, 
this is this is dark. Like I said, it's it's a dark video and it's a sad and tragic moment. Um, but there, are, it is not the first time. There is a um, article here behind the Bachelor curse, as beloved past stars have died by suicide, overdoses, and horrific accidents. We don't need to go through all of them. You know, it's kind of sad that um, that you only hear about maybe the more popular ones. So Gia, right? She had a tragic passing. Um, she was the third top three former reality television contestant that appeared on Jake Pavelka's season. She was a Long Island swimsuit model and was Jake's final three, but was ultimately sent home in week seven. And then uh, she was, um, you know, hospitalized and later uh, declared brain dead after um, she um, died by suicide. There was others. And, you know, um, obviously, like I said, with 20 plus seasons of contestants, there's always going to be a sample size of tragedy. And there isn't too much you can do to, um, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, leave a comment because my, my videos are always open for people to share their input. And I know times are always changing. I try to speak slow and uh, specific with these topics because, you know, a lot of people used to say someone committed suicide, which was then considered maybe a derogatory way to look at it. Um, because it is a mental health issue. It's an issue of pain and suffering. It's not just a mental health issue. It's a lot of issues. But um, in, in the end, it really comes down to our mental health. And we have an issue of a lot of people not seeing light at the end of the tunnel. A lot of people not seeing um, a hope. And a lot of people, when you feel hopeless, you know, some people decide to take that matter into their own hands. And as tough as life can be, uh, you know, I don't, the only thing I can say is there's, there's always a better day ahead. And, um, if anyone has any comments that can help anybody who might be in a mindset that is, um, that doesn't have hope, maybe we can try to do a better job of helping others feel hopeful, helping others feel like there is a bigger meaning to this whole life. Obviously with social media, with Instagram, it's something we always consistently have to take inventory over. The idea that, um, you know, we go on social media and we compare ourselves to everyone else's, um, you know, success story and it can feel like we're failures and couple that with, you know, with whatever other mental health issues people have, you know, it can, it can really feel like you're not going to achieve what you set yourself up to achieve in life and time slipping away. And, you know, I'm 38. He's, he died, died at 36. So I can speak to that feeling of raw, I mean, and sometimes anger that the world's not providing what it was supposed to, the white picket fence. The I mean, we're living in what people call a silent depression. You know, if you have, a, literally, if you have a mental health issue, and say you, you commit self-harm and then you go to the hospital, what's your reward? A $20,000 hospital bill? Do you know what I mean? People live in despair. People, you know, we talked about in the bachelor world that died by heroin overdose or drug addiction. It's an uphill battle trying to fight all of the uh, modern um, societal hurdles that exist out there. And not everybody feels in their current state of mind that that's a fight they want to take on. So... I understand to an extent, but could never fully cope with that, uh, uh, what someone might be going through and the sadness, depression that they might have. But um, big virtual hugs to anyone out there in our community, in any community we touch, and anyone who ever finds a video of ours. All I think we want to do is restore a community where there might not have been one and let people know that they're not alone. So you're not alone out there. Even if you're watching this, feeling alone, we're all connected in one way or another. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. And maybe we can all, um, you know, find a way to keep that flame going. All right, folks, we'll have more content. I know it's a heavy one to start with. I get it. Um, when we saw when I saw this story, I was like, oh, my gosh, who's it going to be? Who, what happened? You know, that, those typical concerns I think we have within our community. But just remember, we can all do our part. We can all do our part to try to limit any online hate or any other hate 
that we see in our life and lead with love. All right, more content coming your way. We'll be back in a little bit.